Our Father, we come before you, Lord. We're all guilty of negligence. We're guilty of delay. We're guilty of not giving everything the totality of what we've got. We've done a little. We've preached a little. We've traveled a little. We've evangelized a little. We've done it in our spare time. We've done it in our weekends. We've given more time to the world. And we're giving more resources to building the world that the Antichrist will take over when, when you come and take the people of God away. We've given so much of our talent, so much of our skill, so much of our time, so much of all that we have, all that you gave us. We're giving so much to growing and developing the world. Now, Lord will say, we repent of giving our life, our totality to the world. We now want to give everything with God unto you. Receive us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, no more pulling back. Amen. No more negligence. Amen. And Lord, we lay everything now on the altar. Amen. And Lord will say, take all of us, everything, not just a part but everything take everything lord and we pray that it will be used for you for your kingdom in jesus name none of self but all of thee we're not dividing our time with you we're not dividing our treasures with you we're not dividing our talent with you we're not dividing anything we have with you saying some for us and some for you or more for us or less for you or maybe less for us and more for you but we say none for us anymore Amen. and we say that all will be for you in jesus name Amen. and lord we pray you give us as a gift to the church Amen. that the church will be able to make use of us as it pleases you a gift to the world that the world will be able to have the benefit of everything we have so that lord more souls will be born again and brought into the kingdom at such a time like this in jesus name Amen. lord we're sorry for the way we have been thinking the way we have been acting it's when patients are dying we need the doctors it will be unthinkable that when patients are dying of epidemic and it will kind of ravaging disease that the doctors then were run away from the hospital but lord that's what we have done when there's any trouble in any country then we run back home when there's any kind of a fire burning in any place then we run back home and when there's any commotion and any confusion and then when the people are not sure of life we who are supposed to give them hope for living is that that we run away lord we pray we will not run away from the post of duty anymore in jesus name lord this single life we have we're praying that you will use us and you will preach you will through us you'll bring the gospel to those who are dying in jesus name we find out people in different parts of the world that when there is any problem in iraq any problem in iran any problem somewhere that's the time they'll take the bible in their thousands and then drive it to that place when they're not sure of life that's where they go there to take the bibles to them and to take the gospel to them lord we who say we're saved and sanctified and we will say we have the protection of the lord upon us we will say we have the fullness of the spirit of god is that that when people are dying and when people are not sure of life then we run away from there lord we pray it will not happen like that anymore in jesus name that lord whatever do or die whatever it will take after all even people in peaceful countries they die too even people in you know rich countries they die too even people and uh, when it appears there's no problem they die too and there are people that survive in the countries where there are troubles and lord we pray we will be among the number that will go there with courage and with passion and we will survive in jesus name your angels will watch over us your angels will be around us underneath us will be the everlasting arms and lord we pray until our latest breath we're going to keep on preaching the gospel we're saying oh lord send us oh lord send us send us lord send us lord what we lay on the altar today will not take back again we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and everybody said, 
Amen. Thank you very much. We can see that we're looking at the word of God tonight, and we're looking at gifts of Christ to a church. The gifts of Christ to his church. When Christ ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men, and he gave those gifts for the benefit of the church, so that the church will be able to carry the whole gospel, the whole world, and take it to the whole world. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. To everyone. Do you have any grace there? I said, Do you have any grace there? Unto every one of us is given grace. And he gave that grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saved. When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Give gifts unto men. What kind of gifts did he give? It tells us in verse 11, he gave some apostles. He gave the apostle as a gift to the church. And some prophets, he gave the prophets to as a gift to the church. And some evangelists, he gave those evangelists as a gift for the church to make use of and reach the world. And some pastors and teachers, he gave those gifts, the pastors and teachers, their gifts to the church. And the Lord is giving that gift to you. If you are a pastor, if you are a teacher, if you are an evangelist, an apostle, a prophet, you're given us a gift unto the church so that the church, through you and through me and through us together, will be able to fulfill the calling of the Lord upon the church. And this is the reason why for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ it tells us in romans chapter 6 chapter 12 romans chapter 12 verse 6 romans chapter 12 we're reading from verse 6 it tells us about the gift that he has given you as a gift and myself as a gift and it gives us to the church so that the church will be able to fulfill the great commission he has given to the church having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith is saying that the prophets who prophesy their gifts unto the church in verse um, in verse 7 or ministry ministers who minister let us wage on a ministry or he that teaches the teachers on teaching is saying that the ministers are gifts to the church and the teachers are gifts to the church and then in verse 8 it says so he that exhorteth on exhortation the people who exhort they have the ability they have the understanding to take the scriptures and encourage and instruct and exhort and, and, and motivate people and lead people to the right direction and right action that's why it says so he that exhorteth on exhortation he that giveth he, let him do it with simplicity the givers they are also a gift to the church you want to have a project here you want to have a project there they're not mighty preachers they're not mighty talkers but they have some substance and the substance they have it, it Lord has given them as he give they, they just give it to the church and give it to the church so that the projects of the church for the evangelization of the world and for the discipline of the converse and then for the growth of the church of the living God all that is going on because of those gifts and it says he that truly with diligence those who rule they have administrative ability they have ruling ability they're able to organize they're able to you know lead us very well and when they do that it says they're ruling with diligence and those rulers they are gifts of the church he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness is telling us that there are many gifts and all these gifts the lord sets in the church and he gives you a particular grace a particular gift and a particular talent so that you'll be a gift unto the church i pray that from today whatever gift the lord has given you you are not be, you are not going to be withholding in jesus name in first corinthians chapter 12 first corinthians chapter 12 verse 18 but now as god said members every one of them in the body as it has pleased him 
he made some apostles as his pleased him made some prophets as his have pleased him and some evangelists as it has pleased him and some pastors as it has pleased him and some teachers as it has pleased him some exhorters those who exhort as it has pleased him he says god has said members and minister to every one of them in the body in the church as it has pleased him but so it and god has set some in the church first apostles god has set some first apostles you see that's what the word of god says it's first first that means that they are the head of the team it doesn't set forth first the feet first the hands first whatever but the head falls the apostles falls he gives some apostles the head physically naturally the people who lead the people who control the people who direct they direct the church he gave them first without the head the legs will be nothing and without the head the hands will be nothing without the head all the other parts whatever the ability or strength or, or skill may be will be nothing but he gives the lord gives some in the church first apostles secondly prophets thirdly teachers and that's what the lord himself said the lord himself is ordering it he says first you have apostles and secondly you have a prophets and thirdly here you have teachers after that miracles and, and gifts of healing look up here for a moment and look at what the lord has said here he said first apostles secondly prophets thirdly what and then it says and after that what now when you think about the church at like the church at large what which one do they put first teaching or miracle teaching or deliverance teaching or healing do you see how the whole church has gone astray and then you see our own church here and the lord established this church and he gave us the gift of teachers and the gift of teaching to be able to set things right and to be able to show us this is the way what here hearing and he tells us the importance of teaching and he says even when the lord shall give you the bread of affliction and the water of affliction even when things are bad and there is no miracle and you only have bread of affliction and water of affliction yet i will not take your teachers away from you the lord is saying i'm going to do you a favor even when there are no miracles or signs and wonders your teachers will not be taken away from you your eyes shall see your teachers and you will hear a word behind you that you say this is the way walk ye therein the lord is setting teaching above miracle it says after that miracle then gifts of healing helps governments diversities of tongues governments there there's administration organization and if you know some churches uh, that is number one in those churches even some of our own local churches here it has an administrator is able to organize this and put this here and put this here and put this here the people they're going to say you hey, will trust brother so and so well, anytime is there everything is well structured this and this and that and then that administrator governments is set above the teachers of the world and say so, well he only can teach just a teacher he's just a teacher let's come back to the bible the bible is telling us that first apostles and secondly prophets and then teachers then he said after that we have the rest of them and what the lord has given us in this church as a great gift we're going to retain unto the very end in jesus name it says in verse 29 are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers it still follows the same order number one apostles number two prophets number three teachers are all workers of miracles it still puts miracles after the teachers and then it says of all the gifts of healing do all speak with tongues do all do all interpret but covet earnestly the best gifts the gifts for the church and find out what gift will i manifest so that i can be my best 
to the church of the living God and it says and yet I shown to you a more excellent way we're talking about the gifts of Christ to his church I divide the message to three parts number one the plurality of ministerial gifts in the church the plurality of ministerial gifts in the church number two the perversion of ministerial gifts in the church the perversion when something is perverted that means it's, you know, it's corrupted it's not you know manifested or exercised in the right way the perversion of ministerial gifts in the church number three the purpose of ministerial gifts in the church the purpose of ministerial gifts in the church number one the plurality of ministerial gifts in the church ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 11 and verse 12 ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers plurality of ministerial gifts the gifts it gives to the church he gives us apostles he gives us prophets he gives us evangelists he gives us um, he gives us pastors and he gives us teachers and uh, there are some people that uh, they only take one of that in their churches they only take sometimes the leader there is like an evangelist and a revivalist and that's all they want but he gives us the plurality and he knows that every part is necessary it's like your five fingers all the five fingers they are necessary when one is off of course you can still be alive but you, you are going to do less the thumb that's like the apostle that's the one that holds everything together and the prophet that's the one that says thus says the lord that is the one that is declaring the revelation that we didn't know before that's the prophet and then the middle finger the longest of them all that's the evangelist that is reaching out to regions beyond reaching out to the cities beyond and reaching out to all the countries beyond and then the, the next finger there is a law finger that is the pastor that is the shepherd that's the one that is saying God bless your children God bless you over there and then it's you know comforting us and helping us and making us to know that we can stay in the Lord it's the one revealing the grace of God to us sustaining grace of the Lord and the love of God whatever you are going through stay in there that nights will not be forever the morning will come again and then the little finger here is a teacher that's the one that gets into your ear when something is teaching you in the ear and then once you stick in that little finger there the teacher everything will be all all right i said everything will be all right what if you just cut off you know one of those fingers because i don't think i need that of course you need everything you need the apostles you need the prophets and you need the evangelists and you need the prophet the pastors and you need the teachers the plurality of gifts ministerial gifts in the church we're coming back to uh, first corinthians chapter 12 first corinthians chapter 12 plurality Plurality of ministerial gifts. We're looking at chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 28. And God has set some in the church. God has set some in the church. And you know what builders do? The builders, when they want to build, they don't just hang the roof there. They set a pillar here. They set a pillar here. They set another pillar here. It's when those pillars are set there then you'll be able to put the superstructure every other thing and god wants to build a church and before he can build the church this is what he does he sets the leaders and he says those apostles and pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets he sets them in the church and he does that as he pleases him because he knows their qualities you know if you are wondering why did he choose a stammering moses instead of a you know fluent aaron i'm sure now you know you know the reason why you know the reason why aaron couldn't have made that con uh, that nation to stand but stammering moses he was able to do it that's why he said the people there as he pleases him 
was it he said uh, peter and then uh, john and then he gave uh, peter it's like he was the forefront man why not uh, this you know the gentle and the mild and the merciful and the gracious john uh, you know john and uh, you know a, 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 a great apostle but an apostle of love children love one another and then john will say you know i wrote to the church but diotrephes who loves the praise of men more than the praise of god he wouldn't allow me to go in and what can we do i will tell you all that he said and all that he preaching against us and slandering us when i come i will tell you that's what john will say if it is peter i'm sure you know peter will not say i will tell you say i'll tell him if it's paul he tell paul will say you cannot do that he said some people came wanting to spy out our liberty and we gave them no chance no for, not for a moment that's paul and, but you know john uh, children love one another that's good that's good we need people like that too, but we also need people that will set things right that will say here it is and this is the way to go Be and god knows our nature he knows her ability he knows what you can stand for he knows how much you can take the heat and therefore he sends us to the right places to see what to do and god has said some not everybody not everybody he has said some in the church and you know the you know what destroys churches is when god says a there and be there and C there and D there and D is trying to take the place and the responsibility of A. That's what destroys the church. Because now it is we're no more concentrating. I mean, when that happens, they are no more concentrating on what the Lord has set them there for. They want to now take the position of A. And God has not said D in A's place. He has not said F on A's place. And when he has said the apostle. He has set the prophet, he has set the evangelist, he has set the pastor and the teacher in their places. We remain in those places faithful unto the Lord. And that's when the church will stand. Our church will stand. First, the apostles, secondly, the prophets, and then thirdly, the teachers. After that, tell me, tell me again. And you know these miracles are wonderful and these miracles are very great and then it says also and then the gifts of healings gifts of healings and you know the problem everywhere i go now it's like anywhere i go once i get there what the people are expecting they're not expecting teaching they're not expecting that things will be set right paul the apostle said when i come i will set all things and put everything in order but anywhere i go now it's like only a miracle a miracle a miracle how about the teaching ministry how about the word of god reaching out to the people and touching the lives of the people how about the lord himself reorganizing everything and saying this is the way and this is the way to go but miracle miracle the, the church is not following the right direction and that is what we're saying that we're coming back to the bible that we're going miracles are good but it's not the first thing healings are good but they're not the first thing and deliverances are wonderful but they're not the first thing and we're going to do we're going to reset and restructure the church according to the word of the lord so that it will not be like f or g is trying to control a and then the place that the lord has given a we're not able to fulfill that again because you know all we want now miracle miracle and healing healing and deliverance deliverance and it is the influence of these other churches on the church over here and that is going to change in jesus name come back to that verse again it says god has said not man if you try to organize the church reorganize the church according to the desires of men according to the pronounced and felt needs of men we're going to ruin the church but it says god as such some not all some in the church first apostles second relay prophets and thirdly teachers then after that after that miracles and then still after that gifts of healings after that hells governments and diversities of tongues it says are all apostles of course the answer is obvious what's the answer no 
It's not everybody that will be in the limelight, number one over there, apostle. Are all prophets? The answer is no. Are all teachers? The answer is no. You know, sometimes as we come like this to a congress, and you know, and we want to teach the word of God, and then we'll put brother A there to do that, brother B there to do that, brother, you know, C there to do that. And some people are wondering, uh, uh, brother so and so did not teach uh, last year. Uh, this same brother did not teach, uh, you know, five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, and last year. Why is it that? Why is the rotation not going around? Because he has said some as apostles and some as prophets and some as teachers. And he says, are all apostles? And the answer is no. Are all prophets? The answer is no. Are all teachers? What's the answer? And because the answer is no, that's why the, the Lord himself organizes everything. I pray that we'll accept the organization of the Lord in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostle chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 13. We're looking at verse 1. All through to verse 4. The plurality of ministerial gifts in the church. Acts chapter 1 verse Acts chapter 13 verse 1 Now there were in the church that was at Antioch Certain prophets and teachers Priority again the prophets were there And the teachers were there Which one comes first? Which one comes second? You know the word of God is very clear He orders them And he doesn't model them together And you need to order that in your heart and believe that in your heart and understand that God sets in the church apostles, prophets, then the rest of them. And then he goes on and he says, As Barnabas and Simon, Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manain, which had which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, and they ministered unto the lord and fasted when they ministered as they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy ghost said separate me barnabas and saul for the work whereunto i have called them that's the lord again setting them to do the work he has called them to it's not a self-appointment it's not that i can do that if they don't put me there, I'll do it myself. No, separate unto me, set apart unto me the work I have called them to. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by who? Tell me out loud. By the Holy Ghost, it says, departed unto Seleucia. And from this, they sailed to Cyprus. It says, is the Lord himself that sent them. Is the Lord himself that gave them the word. And the work the Lord has given you, I pray you will do it. But you, you are going to see when we see plurality of uh, leaders and plurality of uh, ministerial gifts in the church. It doesn't mean that all those gifts must be in one church. You need to pay attention now. It doesn't mean that there must be A number one, B number two, C number three, and D number four, and E number five. All the five must be in every local church. Let me show you. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 5 then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them how many people went to the city of Samaria how many people just one just one Philip and the Lord did what he wanted to do and then come and look at verse 26 and the angel of the Lord spake unto who tell me unto Philip you know, all the, the Peter and the John that came, they, they went. And after that, the angel spoke to Philip, just one man. And when he spoke to him, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. 
and he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia an eunuch of great authority under Candace it says the queen that's the queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot ready desires the prophet then the spirit of the Lord said unto who unto Philip go near and join thyself to this chariot and you know what happens later that was just a single man and then we're told in verse 40 but Philip was found at Azotus and passing through he preached in all the cities himself alone himself alone all the cities he preached in that in those places till he came unto Caesarea you know there are times God will send two or three or four or five other times he sent just one in that local church to be the pastor to be the teacher to be the evangelist and to be all that he wants to give that little local church we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 10 acts chapter 10 from verse 19 in Acts chapter 10 verse 19 it says while peter thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek thee and arise therefore and get thee down and go with them doubting nothing for i have sent them the lord sent just peter there other people went but the lord actually sent peter and it was when peter was preaching was talking to the house of cornelius the holy ghost came upon them we're looking at acts chapter 26 verse 15. acts 26 we're reading from verse 15. in acts 26 verse 15 it says and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest i pray you'll not be a persecutor of jesus uh, that man never thought he was persecuting Christ. He thought he was persecuting the members of the church, was persecuting those people, the apostles, the workers, the leaders in the church. That's what he thought until Christ came and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. He was persecuting Jesus. And the Lord said, I am. Yes, he was. And still is even from heaven that jesus christ is still jesus emmanuel god with us he is still the lord i said he's still the lord and i pray that every one of us will, be real will realize that and be conscious of that in jesus name and understand that we ought not to persecute members of the church or ministers of the church because if you do that you persecute him who says i am jesus whom thou persecutest look at verse 16 but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make how many people thee one person a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which i will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send how many people thee just one as we're talking about the plurality of ministerial gifts in the church that's in the church at large the whole church has given us apostles in the whole church he has given us prophets the whole church he has given us evangelists and pastors and teachers but when it comes to a local church it's possible we'll just have one person there and that person is able to do this and this and that and it's able to direct and control and it's able to instruct and develop and disciple all the people there paul the apostle was such a man he says in verse in verse 18 to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me we're looking at let, let's look at this paul for a moment and we're looking at first timothy chapter 2 i want you to understand when it says it's giving some apostles and some prophets and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints or the work of the ministry for the define of the body of christ until we all come in the unity of the faith 
unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Paul the apostle, see all the position and the things the Lord gave him to do. In First Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher. That's one. And an apostle. That's another thing. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, and a, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. A preacher, the same man, an apostle, the same man, a teacher, the same person. I'm sure you know he was a prophet. Nobody spoke about the second coming, the day of the Lord, the rapture, and the Antichrist coming, and those future events, eschatological things, like Paul the Apostle. He was a prophet, and nobody evangelized like him. He was an evangelist. And in that single man, you have the apostle. In that single man, you have the prophet. In that single man, you have the evangelist. In that single man, you have the pastor. In that single man, you have the teacher. I was a pastor too. He said, hey, if you have a thousand teachers, yet you have only one father and i am your father i'll be coaching you in the lord he stayed in that corinthian church for such a long time developing them and growing them and discipling them and the lord made that man such a man like that and the lord will make you too you know when the grace of god comes to your life and the lord develops and he says this is what you do maybe you are just a teacher before then he says now you can be an evangelist but the teaching ministry is still there and now you evangelize and they say now you want to go into a prophetic area and the teaching and the evangelism and then you're a pastor as well the lord can do it he will do it in jesus name we're looking at a second Timothy chapter 1 verse 11 we're looking at the authority the, the office of paul the apostle what he did Paul the Apostle, he fitted into all those areas because God set him to be like that. And God will set you to what you ought to be in Jesus' name. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I'm reading there from verse 11, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the gentiles now let's look at another person that is not so obvious like paul the apostle let's look at timothy and let's see that this timothy he, oh yes he gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers but let's look at this uh, timothy and let's see the ministry that god put him into we're looking at first timothy chapter one first timothy chapter one verse three as i besought thee to abide still at ephesus when i went into macedonia that they teach no other doctrine that means he was a pastor a pastor because he was to abide he was to stay in the church at ephesus and do the work of a pastor do you know he was a teacher too let's look at it in second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 and he thinks which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also timothy was a pastor and timothy was a teacher you know there are some people that say well i'm just a pastor uh, everybody should know i'm not a teacher i just have this love and this grace and you know just get people together and just be a blessing to them and just make them feel comfortable in everything they have to do as for teaching i leave that to other people the lord can make somebody a pastor and a teacher at the same time it was not just a pastor and a teacher it was also an evangelist look at second timothy chapter four i'm reading from verse five second timothy chapter 4 verse 5 but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of who of an of an evangelist that's timothy do the work of an evangelist he was a pastor he was a teacher he was also an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry now you understand if god has given you five gifts you need to use all the five if god has given you three gifts you need to use all the three if god has given you only one gift you, you need to use that one don't say i have only one gift I, i'm called as a gift to the church only one and then i go to bury that because i'm comparing myself with somebody else having five gifts and because mine is not like his mine is not like theirs because of that i bury it says no whatever god has given you see it and the lord will reach out to the world and to the church through you in jesus name point number two now the perversion of ministerial gifts in the church 
the corruption of mysterious gifts in the church the wrong use the abuse of mysterious gifts in the church you know there are people that have gifts they misuse it don't you find that in the world there are people that have brains and they misuse that brain instead of being good and being profitable society they become a corrupting influence inside you there are some people that have great organizational abilities and instead of using it for the progress of society they, they use it in the wrong way they use it to destroy and to divide and to kill and uh, to just uh, eradicate or to, to, to uh, terminate the lives of many people. I'm sure you know some people in history that have great organizational abilities and great uh, courage and all those gifts they use. Instead of developing the world, what they did was to destroy the world. Hitler was one of them. That, that man was a great strategist. I was a great organizer. I was a great administrator. I was a great military man. And he, he, he made the whole nation, his own nation at that time, to go against the world. He used his gift in to destroy instead of using that gift to build up. And there are people that do that too religiously they have gift they have calling they have commission and instead of using that gift to build up the church of the living god they use the gift to destroy and they use the gift to kind of set the church back and i'm going to show you apostles do so misuse that gift the prophets do so misuse that gift the evangelists those who misuse that gift and the pastors those who misuse that gift and the teachers all those gifts the lord has given to the church they pervert the gifts ministerial gifts in the church let's start with our apostleship we're looking at second corinthians chapter 11. second corinthians chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 13. second corinthians 11 verse 13 for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works you see there apostles that's what they call themselves but then they kind of prostituted that gift and then they perverted that gift and they led people astray revelation chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 2 revelation chapter 2 verse 2 i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear with them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles they say that's what they say but corrupted apostles perverted apostles destructive apostles the prostitute the pervert the gifts to destroy lives instead of saving instead of sustaining instead of building instead of developing the lives of people they say they're apostles and are not and thou hast found them liars and as born and as patience and for my name's sake as labored and has not fainted i pray you will not faint you know sometimes when you are confronted with false apostles and false prophets and false teachers and false pastors and evangelists that derail people instead of leading in the right direction sometimes you can be discouraged but you will not be discouraged you will take i said you'll take Christ. tell me again you'll take and then you'll be a helper in the ministry in jesus name and those are the apostles but you know false apostles they pervert the gift of apostleship look at the prophets now we're looking at second peter chapter two false prophets you know it's like whatever gift some people receive they know how to pervert it the adamic nature the bent towards evil makes them to pervert a great thing that could be of use of great benefit to the body of christ they pervert that the perversion of mysterious gifts in the church second peter chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 1 but there were false prophets also among the people 
even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately privately shall bring in damnable heiresses even denying the lord about them and bring upon themselves swift destruction they bring upon other people destruction they bring upon themselves to swift destruction it says a many shall follow their pernicious ways many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through the throat of virtuousness shall they with feigned walls make merchandise of you and they do that for gain that brings us again to the love of money the love of prestige love of position love of authority it says they'll make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not it tells us in verse in verse 18 for when they speak great swelling words of vanity their law through the lost of the flesh through much wantonness those that were clean escaped from them who live in error the people that had been saved before they bring them back into corruption those are the false prophets i pray god will deliver us from that in jesus name revelation chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 revelation chapter 2 reading from verse 14 it says in verse 14 but i have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of balaam who taught balaam to cause a stumbling block before the children of israel and to eat things sacrifice unto idols and to commit fornication can you imagine that somebody in the church can you imagine that somebody is supposed to be a leader in the church a prophet in the church but a false prophet a perverted prophet and then is is encouraging people to eat things sacrificed to idols and is giving them some reasons why well, there's nothing wrong in all this after all now we're in the day of grace and the age of grace and the people that commit him on fornication immorality he is the one that is you know is trying to you know comfort them and say well god understands you know so and so too did it and so and so did it and uh, what uh, are they going to kill you because of that all this you know that's what you are talking about that if uh, this church can manifest manifest love to false doctrine people and manifest love to all these adulterers and fornicators and manifest love and have understanding that it's not just teaching 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 you know the teachers is through the coach bible coach bible where is the love where is the love and the love that will accommodate everybody and allow the rotten eggs to stay with the good eggs so that the rotten eggs will corrupt every other sin and then the whole church is gone it's not just love. it must be love and truth and love and righteousness it must be love and the grace of god in our lives it's when we bring everything together then we're able to lead a church a church that has been prepared for the coming of the lord and i pray that god will give us such a church in jesus name he has given us already well preserve it in jesus name i want you to look at verse 20 notwithstanding i have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that allowest that permittest you have left that woman jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess nobody called her prophetess she called herself prophetess do you know how some people warm their way into the leadership you know sometimes we're saying an overseer somewhere and the overseer is new there he doesn't know anybody and then you find this the prophetess and you know the one that is prophesying the dreamers women dreamers and then they're coming to that man of god welcome man of god welcome man of god and uh, you need to know some of us who are here by the grace of god we're here to build by the grace of god we're here to support and if you need our attention anytime call on us any hour of the day we're always there yes they're there and it might be useful in some areas but then they bring in corruption they bring in false doctrine they bring in false emphasis and then the word of god that we have established all these years they turn everything upside down before you know what the people are worshiping them rather than worshiping god and here the lord jesus christ said unto this angel of the angel of the church of the of the um what, what now of which church of Tatira, and he said notwithstanding i have a few things against you because you have left that woman jezebel i'm sure you know the jezebel of the old testament how many of you have heard of jezebel 
What are you? You're, you're untrained in my Bible. I said how many of you have heard of a woman called Jezebel. Thank you. Now, I was watching that sister that she raised up her hand, but you know, she was just there. She didn't want to acknowledge that she knew Jezebel. I'm not, you are not Jezebel, but you know Jezebel now. Everybody, praise the Lord. I, I, that was a strong-minded woman. Strong-minded woman. And when Ahab said, you know, what's wrong with you, Ahab? It's because I told neighbor to give me his vineyard and that I will give him another one or pay for it. And he's not giving me. And Jezebel said, what, you a king? And then you also rise up and eat. I, I will give you uh, Naboth's vineyard. And then she, you know the arrangement she did. And there are people like that. And they use their intelligence to destroy Naboth's. And they use their understanding and administrative ability and the authority they have and the connections they have to destroy neighbors and to take the vineyard of neighbors out of neighbors' land and take neighbors' life. And then the Lord is saying unto oh, this church, you have a woman there called Jezebel and she has authority, she has some real following and it says over here, she calls herself prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols and i gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not behold i will cast her into a bed of affliction and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds i will kill her children that is her followers her converts and the people who have been influenced by her i will kill them with death and all the churches shall know that i am he that such as the rays and the hearts and i will give unto every one of you according to your works but unto you i say unto the rest in tatira as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of satan as they speak i will put none i will put upon you none other body but that which ye have already do you have anything i said do you have anything you have the doctrines of the bible that which you have already hold fast until i come will hold fast in jesus name but you can see that 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 church you see there's the possibility of perverting the gift of the apostle there is the possibility of perverting the gift of the of the prophet and then number three now the possibility of perverting the gift of an evangelist i'm reading philippians chapter one Philippians chapter 1 and I'm reading there from verse 15 Philippians chapter 1 verse 15 some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of good will they won't preach Christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bones those are evangelists they're preaching Christ preaching Christ but preaching with envy preaching with jealousy I'm preaching not to convert sinners, but to corrupt the church. And it's not to lift up Christ, it's to lift up themselves. Some indeed, they preach Christ of contention. Not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. I pray will not be like that. Because there is a curse upon the people that preach Christ, but they are not preaching him sincerely. And they are preaching Christ of contention, of strife encouraging people to live in sin remain in sin and they say they're evangelizing galatians chapter one i'm reading from verse six i marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of christ unto another gospel they preach another gospel and they say they're evangelists and you sometimes you if you if they come to your city and then you listen to them and then all those people that they just say raise up your hand all of you you are children of god children of god children of god and you know i've declared that you are children of god don't doubt don't doubt don't tell anything and they have not repented and they go back into the evil into their morality into all their sins they are all children of god perverted gospel look at verse seven which is another but there 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 be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But do we or an angel from heaven, do we or an evangelist that says, that says, I've seen an angel from heaven. Even that it says, do we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that 
which we are preached unto you. Let him tell me, be accursed. And if somebody is already a curse, will you put him on your pulpit? Yes or no? If somebody already is under the curse of God, damnation of God, it says, let him be a curse. And you know, sometimes uh, somebody, you, you put somebody there, maybe during the retreat or during any kind of program you have, and then he comes in there, and then you hear him saying terrible things. And he's trying to explain, he's trying to explain the Holy Trinity. And he's saying, God is this, and Jesus is this, and the Holy Spirit is this. And then he doesn't have any Bible reference, no Bible. He's just trying to, you know, he's trying to use his own intelligence to corrupt the people. And then the people are surprised and say, what is this? And then he comes again the next time. And then there is a teacher, there's a leader there, there's an overseer there. And if the overseer puts him back again, he hears that that's what that man is saying, that's what man is doing. And he gives him chance to, you know, corrupt the whole church church the thing that the people of god are built up for more than 30 years and then you put somebody there and the fellow is corrupting the minds of the people and he has he, he, he talks intelligently and he talks with assurance and then he backs it up with dream and revelation and the power of the Holy Ghost and this and that and you know, i was there and that's happened i was there and that happened and after he has given all testament then he brings in the corruption and the overseer there cannot set things right and say hey come on get out of that pulpit our pulpit is not for false doctrine I said our pulpit is not for false doctrine. The person who is accursed, preaching another gospel, and then we're just, you know, there's nothing we can do. We're just there. That's why you are there. That is said some in the church, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers, not for the perverting of the saints, but for the perfection of the saints and for the building up of the body of Christ until we all come in the unity of the faith not in disunity of the faith that's why we need to understand that all these ministerial gifts to the church the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher they can be corrupted and you're very vigilant and watchful that you do not allow any of those corruptions to come into the church of the living god and this church will remain standing in jesus name no accursed Achan will stay on our pulpit in jesus name in verse 9 as we said before so say i now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received tell me say it aloud let him be accursed and that's the word of the lord we're not going to pervert the gospel of the lord and now there are pastors we're talking about uh, you know apostles perverted apostles perverting the gospel of the lord and we're talking about the prophets false prophets was talking about the evangelists those who are preaching with envy and jealousy and contention and fighting and then they are preaching you know a kind of gospel that you know is a strange gospel perverted gospel now the pastor we're looking at jeremiah chapter 12 jeremiah chapter 12 i'm reading there from verse 1 jeremiah chapter 12 reading from verse 1 from verse 10 rather jeremiah chapter 12 verse 10 verse 10 verse 10 many pastors have destroyed my vineyard many pastors you think about you know as you look at all the churches all around and then there's a congregation there congregation there congregation there but it's perversion of the pastoral ministry it says many pastors they have destroyed my vineyard they have trodden down they have trained upon my portion on the foot and they have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness that is the make the church of the living god a desolate world and it says over there they're called pastors pastors yet yeah, they destroyed the vineyard of the lord jeremiah chapter 23 i'm looking at verse 1 and verse 2 jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1 woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture i thought you'll say amen, amen. i'm going to read that again and give you another chance 
you miss the first chance you are going to get the second chance and you know when we say blessed are then the amen will almost take the roof away but now when we say this other side this other side and the lord is saying it's like a mother saying will be to the one that be, that bewitches my children what do you say of course of course and then the people that bewitch the children of god the people that jesus died for he paid such a great price and then somebody comes in he says he's a pastor he says he's a shepherd and instead of delivering the sheep from the mouth of the lion and the bear he's feeding the lions and the bears of this world with the sheep of the pasture of the lord and then the lord is saying woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture says the lord and every Everybody said amen. amen that means that you know if you're a pastor you're not going to be a person polluting perverting destroying and scattering and permitting sin immorality and evil in the church of the living god because if you do there is a woe there's a curse there's a damnation there's condemnation upon such a pastor that destroys the vineyard of the Lord. Therefore, does says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors, against the pastors that feed my people. He has scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. Give me a good amen. amen. Now we're talking about the teachers too. You know, as uh, people pervert the ministry of the apostle, they pervert the ministry of the prophet, they pervert the ministry of the evangelist, they pervert the ministry of the pastors, they also pervert the ministry of the teacher. We're looking at Mark chapter 7, verse 7. Mark chapter 7, we're looking at verse 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. Here's the word of the Lord. It says, The Lord Jesus said, How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. I pray that this church will be purged with all those commandments of men. All the traditions of men. Uh, you know, uh, in the earlier days, uh, people got converted. They came from all these white garment churches. And when they came in, all the practices they had in the white garment churches, they left them behind they came in here to learn afresh and the people that are coming from eternal security camps and when they come in here they, they drop all that they had on eternal security uh, camp and then they come in here to learn afresh and the people that are coming from you know liturgy liturgical kind of a uh, um, denomination all the liturgy all the use of prayer book and everything they leave all those things behind they come in here and to learn afresh and the people that are coming from you know all the people places that have the regulation you know the fast uh, you know 40 days every year or the fast uh, you know 14 days uh, at a particular time when it came in they left all that behind all the commandments of men all the dogmas of men they left everything behind they came in here they learned afresh but today the people that say they are getting converted here and the people that say they are coming to the church here they come in with all their baggage they come in with all their tradition they come in with all the commandments of men and you come to this other church and you see that there's uh, water there and i'm asking what's the water there for and they say that uh, you know our pastor you know got a revelation he prays on that water and when we drink uh, you know we're there for that place we're strong on drink water and i say pastor uh, what's happening he says uh, you know uh, gs um, really my conviction is that uh, uh, where i was before before i came to deeper life any any time we have any problem and they will just take uh, you know the uh, water to the prophet and he prays on that finish and uh, and since the thing is working the thing is working as my members because it's working first doctrine is working holy water is working anointed water is working that's what we're doing it all those things you brought from your past domination leave them if you knew that that place was all right why didn't you stay there or did you come in here don't bring that thing here it will not stay here i said it will not stay here and then as you see somebody in our church and you know it's uh, coming inside and it, there's no shoe and i'm saying no uh, what's the problem with my brother there is it that your leg is seeking you and then temporarily you remove the shoe and i say come on here uh, any problem oh he says no pastor no problem i say what's the problem that you, i see that you're not wearing shoes. he said it's you know because the lord said 
you are staying on holy ground and there's no holier place than our church building and therefore i cannot wash i said where did you get that where i'm coming from where you are coming from drop that thing where you are coming from and when you do that the lord will bless you in jesus name you know all these traditions that people bring and then what we're teaching is not effective what we're teaching they're still holding on to this and holding on to that the little thing you are holding on to adding to the word of god is the one that will destroy every other good thing you have that's the reason why jesus said how be it they teach for doctrine the commandments of men the dogmas of men you become false teachers when you do that look at second timothy chapter chapter three chapter four verses three and four second timothy i'm reading from chapter four and we're looking at verses three and four it says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but it says after their own laws they shall heed to themselves teachers having itching ears there are people that have itching ears they want to hear something new like the Athenians, something new something new something new but there's no new thing god is still the same jesus is still the same the Holy Ghost is still the same and the word of God is still the same forever the same the word of Lord is settled how long forever settled forever that's why you hold on to that hold on to that that unchanging word then it says they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry uh, this uh, false doctrine the people that teach uh, this and that if you don't check them don't control them if you don't push them aside what happens look at chapter 2 of second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 17 verse 18 and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hamenios and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying, teaching that the resurrection is past already. And what do they do? The latter part of verse 18. And uh, tell me out loud overthrow the faith of some why are we going to be foolish and you know labor go up go down and uh, fly in the aeroplane go in the boat and then after you've done all that then you allow some people to overthrow the faith of some you know sometimes we don't talk to you you don't understand all the price that we're paying and that's why i tell you some of these few things I was seeing um, UK, that's in uh, England uh, at the time in December because you know God is just opening doors and I had to you know go to a particular church, white church to go and preach. And when the invitation came, I just said, Well, I must go, even though I knew it was December. And normally in December over there's very, very cold and the snow, the snow. Uh, they said they've not seen snow like this for decades, for 10 to many, many years. And then after all the ministry, that I booked my ticket to come here in time and uh, to come for the retreat and then the snow will not allow the aeroplane to move uh, because you know the with the airport everything was just sealed up the aeroplanes could not and the retreat was coming i said what will i do and then i had to go on land to a particular place and do go on ferry on the sea to another place and then go by train to another place to get to paris and then from paris i now took plane to be able to come over here you know some people think that you know the, the man is you know is just is on holidays <laughs> holiday vacation i'll give you part of that holiday so you two you'll be on vacation and go on the sea and go on land and go by here before you come over here and then i came over here and then we started the retreat and wasn't that some retreat and i pray that the lord will energize you like that and you know when we have labored like that we've gone over sea and over land and a train and everywhere and then we get and we build up and what we build up and then somebody comes in now to be teaching something that will pervert the gospel and overthrow the faith of some you understand the reason why i can be very serious and firm on such a thing we paid all the price we need to pay so that the church of the living god will stand and you're going to stand in jesus name 
and then all of us that if we're working together team together everybody accomplishes more and then as i'm building you are taking that thing you're giving it to me and then hand in hand and heart to heart and head to head and mind to mind with one mouth we're declaring the word of the lord we're building together and what we're building nobody is pulling down you will not pull down in jesus name the overthrow the face of some that's the reason why we need to stand against every pollution every perversion every corruption so that this church the church of the living god will stand on the totality of the doctrines of the bible in jesus name now point number three the purpose the purpose of ministerial gifts in the church was he giving us apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and all those leaders why has he given us the purpose of ministerial gifts in the church I'm looking at uh, this again in Ephesians chapter Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 Ephesians chapter 4 we're looking at verses 11 and 12 the purpose why he has given us all those gifts and it says for and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for what reason verse 12 tell me out loud tell me out loud for the perfecting of the saints now if you brought a choir to sing immediately before the preaching and the choir the way they sing the congregation they are laughing and the congregation it's funny and they know <laughs> maybe the choir is not happy and they're trying to show the pastor something and he gave all these gifts the singers the instrumentalists and the music and the prayer warriors and the exhorters and the preachers and the supporters and all the hells he gave them for the perfecting of the saints but now you see that the ministry of that section is not for the perfecting of the saints it's for the pollution perversion of the saints to make the saints get desensitized and to get them used to substandard message and substandard ministry and you see that the instead of cooperating and instead of walking along they want the congregation to become so used to something that is not perfecting us what do you do as a pastor when you understand that all the gifts in the church whether you are preaching or praying or singing or playing music is for the perfecting of the saints then you have to understand if you want the church to be polluted and perverted and everybody gets used to something that is not all right and that is not building us up then it's between you and the lord but if you understand that the gifts in the church material gifts in the church is for the perfecting of the saints and then it says for the work of the ministry to raise up everybody to make everybody have fire and zeal and and the kind of passion to want to reach out and do the work of the lord but if you have a section of the church and the way they are demonstrating their gift and their ability and their talent is to discourage people and to tell them don't be that serious we are not serious don't be that fervent we are not fervent and don't be that committed we are not committed and don't listen don't be that obedient we are not obedient if they are making the church of the living god to go down instead of to come up and then you just sit down there and then you say well the young people nowadays what can we do you can do something i said you can do something so that the ministry in the church will be for the perfecting of the saints and then it says over here for the edifying of the body of christ that means all the gifts the lord has given us in the church apostle and prophet and pastor and teacher and evangelist and everybody it will build up the church and edify the church what if i came here and i didn't give all my strength i didn't give all my ability what if i came in here and then i was speaking as if i don't want to lose my voice because you know i need my voice what do i need the voice for the voice is only to preach what do i need the voice for and if i preach and this and, and the voice goes that's exactly what you have the voice for and then when you come in anything you're doing you say this is for the perfecting of the saints and for the define of the body of christ until we all come in the unity of the faith unto a 
perfect man unto the measure of the stature of Christ. That's what the Lord is calling you and I and all of us to. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. Your ministry should support that of preaching and that of the pastor so that all of us together with one mind and one mouth and with one direction and one control, we're going to edify the body of Christ. You will do it, I will do it. I said you will do it, I will do it. All of us who are here, I want you to think now, no matter the load, no matter the load, if all of us here will bench down and then carry a load, I think no matter how heavy that load is, the hand and the strength and the ability and the skill of everybody here, if we all join together to carry that load, we'll take it to the highest level. Have you seen the ants? There's something here that, you know, it's uh, the ants know that they need to carry. And that thing is, it looks big. And the ants are tiny, 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 tiny ants. And then they all come together. This one, this way, this one, this way. And I don't know how they do it. They, they, they circle that thing and they are moving that thing. I'm telling you, they move it until they move it to the place they want to get that thing to. All those little hands because they are united and they carry that thing. Look at all of us here. If, you know, while we're carrying up, if you are not pulling, now if everybody will join hand and heart and everything together and we carry it we're going to carry this church to glory we're going to carry it to higher heights in jesus name forget about yourself forget about your friend and understand the lord has given us a gift for the perfecting of the saints you and i we can do it i said we can do it will perfect the church of the living god in jesus name why don't you rise up and say lord i will lord i will lord i will i'm going to bring everything i've got all my skill all my ability everything i've got and this church by the grace of god will move on to perfection he gave some apostles and he gave some prophets and he gave some evangelists and gave some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the defining of the body of christ until we all come in the unity of the faith unto and the knowledge of the lord jesus christ the son of god unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that henceforth henceforth from now on there will be no two and fro tossed up and down and then be carried about by every wind of doctrine in unity we're going to stand in unity we're going to walk open your mouth and pray and say oh lord oh lord oh lord i am available make use of me i will do it lord i will do it lord i will do it lord the lord is calling you the lord is calling me that in unity we're going to do it together oh lord must start with me jesus begin with me who will go for you lord who will go for you lord here am my lord send me send me lord send me oh lord start with me oh lord start with me oh lord start with me jesus begin with me oh we'll go for you lord who oh, will go for you lord here am i here am i here am i lord send me send me lord send me open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer